All right, Naveed Jamali here, and I thought we would do something a little different, which is to give you guys a little bit of behind-the-scenes view of, well, our most popular video, the B2. So let's talk a little bit about some of the things you may have not seen or some of the behind-the-scenes stories that, you know, didn't make it past the cutting room floor. So let's dive right into it. Uh, let's go to split screen, and I'll start walking through perhaps the most iconic moment, which is flying in the jet. So let's get right back into it. So this is Ghost. Um, Ghost is one of the interesting, besides being the fact that he's the commanding officer of the active duty squadron that flies, the, the only B-2 squadron, I should say, it's actually an Air National Guard component as well. But Ghost, his call sign, is interesting in that not only is he a B-2 stealth bomber pilot, He's also an F-117 stealth fighter pilot, and he's flown the F-16. Really interesting cat. Um, totally gets what it means to fly black jets. A uh, pretty rare occurrence and a, definitely a chill dude. So let's, uh, let's get into this here. Precision and stealth. That is the formation brief for the B-2 portion. Good day to fly for sure. All right, so here's the mission for today. It's going to be three aircraft including a tanker. So we're going to be in death. Two one will be the lead. There'll be death. By the way, death, probably one of the coolest call signs you'll hear ever uh, flying around later on, listening to ATC and other aircraft. Uh, when ATC would call out flight of B two B twos off your one o'clock. And uh, you know, you definitely get people looking to see if they could get a glimpse of the jet, but I mean, come on a call sign like death. That's just who does that. It's pretty, Pretty much a finality in terms of the coolest call signs for aircraft I've ever heard. 2-2, two, two, and there's Fast 2-4, which is a T-38 chase plane. We're meeting up around here, and then we're going to tank. And then when we're done tanking, we break. The B-2 and the tanker go on their way. We're then going to go on and do a simulated bomb run. It's about 20 minutes, 20, 25 minutes this way, then 20, 25 minutes back to Whiteman. We'll come back and recover. So this is pretty cool. And I know a lot of people don't necessarily give AFE. They may not even know AFE um, exists. These are the folks that essentially make sure that you're fitted up correctly with your harness, your helmet, your oxygen. Oxygen is pretty important in case, in case there's a decompression, you got to be able to breathe. Uh, you know, part of the crew endurance comes to comes down to this because it's not just about safety. I mean, if you're going to fly a two hour, two day sortie, um, you got to be able to physically move and perform the tasks required to, you know, to fly and fight. And boy, these, these people are super important. So here they are measuring my noggin to make sure that, uh, the giant helmet could fit both my head and my ego. Um, spoiler alert, it did. Uh, so let's go back right back and see what, uh, what happens next. Airman Holt here was actually the one that adjusted my gear. So I'm flying for three hours. How important is it to have appropriate and comfortable fitting gear for these pilots? Very, because when they're out there, their mind is just on a mission. So when we're fitting in here, it needs to be absolutely perfect fit. No exceptions. There we go. All right. All right. I'm going to up there. So the point here is if you're to shoot. To... All right. So I thought we were just going to hang on to the risers and hold on to, you know, the handles. Uh, that turned out not to be the case. And they were like, you got to do this. Yeah, well, it'll be cool. And I was like, how bad can it be? Um, but the answer is fairly uncomfortable. And you'll see why in a second. Simulate hanging, right? Is there yep. anything I can hang, hold on my hands? Oh, no, just slowly sit down. Yep, there you go. Oh, that's delightful. Yeah, that was we're not about delightful. about getting ready to step, getting our gear, going to check in. With weather ops, and then we're out to the flight. Uh, take a look at satellite. This is where it starts to all uh, yeah, on today. Across get the, the sense that this is very, very much real. All right, thanks, guys. Thanks. It's my pilot bandit. Another <laughs> stepping onto the B two flight line is like walking into a giant skiff or sensitive. Comp so this is pretty cool. So I don't know if this came through, but there were three jets operating. Uh, one actually ended up going down. Uh, for maintenance uh so the they're they're turning and turning and burning so these folks um go out and go fly 
then they come back in and we do a crew swap. So we had a limited amount of time because everything is about precision when it comes to Global Strike Command. You got to take off when you say you're going to take off and you got to be where you're in a specific spot in the sky when you say you're going to be there. So nothing can slow down. So this is probably my most stressful moment is that it's just me and Bandit in that cockpit. And there's a few other, like there's a crew chief, there's some other tech, some Northrop Grumman technician working on the comm stuff. But in this moment, it was super stressful because I had to get myself, without looking like a, a goober, get myself into an ejection seat, hook myself up, get ready, and essentially be self-folding luggage that wasn't going to get in the way of the aircraft operations. This is, I believe, the second or third time Bandit has ever flown a uh, single pilot, which, by the way, is not unsafe. They do fly single pilot in the sense that when they're doing long-range enduring uh, endurance missions – one of the pilots will sack out while the other one flies. So it's not uncommon for them to do this. It was obviously a relatively low workload uh, flight for Bandit. Uh, um, although I think it's probably the first, you know, it's the only time that they land and take off with a non-rated pilot on the right seat. So let's go right back into this. Apartmented information facility. The flight line is treated like a secure location. That means no cell phones are allowed, even for the crews working on the flight line. No Apple watches. Nothing that can transmit a signal. Our cameras were allowed only with special permission and security procedures. So the camera crews, this was really the first time that we'd actually, we'd been in a B2 cockpit before that. I'd flown the simulator, but we had a very limited time for them to run up there, mount the GoPros. We had security officers that were going to look at the line of sight and like give thumbs up. This is okay. And then those GoPros had to be essentially hard mounted in those locations. This is not an everyday occurrence. In fact, I'm not aware of anything else quite like this. So um, all has to happen within that window that we have to launch. So there's a lot of stress running between me and the crew. We want to make sure that we are not the ones that slow the takeoff or any of the operational stuff. Because once we take off and we land, that jet is going to be hot swap for another crew. Um, and they're going to go back out and fly. So these jets are turning and burning for the full day. And if anything gets that's, you know, slowed down, it impacts things down the line. So this is my biggest fear is I just don't want to be the one that slows any of that down. At the end of our shoot, our cameras and memory cards were reviewed by the Air Force for national security purposes and returned later with 30% less footage. What is the message that a B-2 flying sends to an adversary? It sends a very clear message to them. When they see us flying and we know that they're watching us, it sends a very clear message. Come on, how At cool Wayman is that? Air Force Base, how cool is that? Securing the B-2 flight line is a demand. The cops. The cops love doing this. Uh, we took a bunch of shots and maybe we'll get some some B-roll of some of the stuff that they make it out. We spent a, you know about an hour or so with them. They were super cool. And uh, you know all these shots that look really like organic and authentic and they are, but it does take a lot of work to get in with them to kind of get this to work. And, you know, we wanted to show that, you know, besides missile bases, uh, the B2 at B2s at Whiteman are some of the most heavily defended uh, assets that the air force has. And they have the most cops they have, I believe they have the most dogs there, uh, more canines than any other base. And they take this stuff very seriously as they should, even though it's in the middle of essentially nowhere, uh, you know, it is a strategic base. There are these are strategic assets. There are only 20 B2s. And, you know, um, just taking one out of service could have a significant impact in our ability to carry out deterrence. So actually, the cops are an integral and incredibly important part of the B2 being able to perform its mission. Ending part of the mission. Protecting the B2 requires a constant state of vigilance by the base's security forces to guard this nuclear capable bomber. Yeah, two one check. Boom. Oxygen doors are closed, looking good. It's almost that time. Power death two one, flight of two, number one, ready. Death two one. I mean that is just I'm sorry, not to geek out, but coolest than ever. Death two one eight flight right one nine wind uh one nine zero one one quick takeoff change of parking. Death two one, clear for takeoff, one nine, push five. We're just waiting a couple more seconds here for the Pino Heat to warm up. Should be good to blast. All right, here comes power. Break release cues. Hundred knots. 
they had to rotate. Good cry. Really, really cool moment right here. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. This is actually our aircraft taking off. Smooth as butter. Not too bad. So we had crews set up everywhere to capture this on the airfield. We had. Oh, wait, this thing really wants to climb. Oh yeah, lightweight like this, this thing wants to go. I also can't get over how well it turns. Oh, it's smooth. It's super smooth in the turns. All right, passing ten thousand. Our cabin pressure looks good at eight thousand. We can go ahead and uh, safe the seat. So you've got the autopilot on, right? But you're doing the throttles. Yep, autopilot's on. So. There was that moment on the takeoff roll. Definitely, I was like, oh, my God, I can't believe I'm doing this. Uh, these shots that you're seeing right here were actually done by a uh, Chase T-38. So we had we had a, a public affairs officer in the back of the T-38 shooting for us. And then, of course, we had another camera person in the KC-135. So cameras in the B-2. There's another B-2 in trail here that's going to meet up with us. Um, just a really wild experience. And really the Air Force is trying to showcase the capability of the B-2, its relevancy. You know, a lot of people ask me, well, this is because the B-21 is coming online and man, or, or it's, you know, recruiting. And I, I got to tell you, nothing could be further from the truth. This is all about communicating our nuclear deterrence and the capability that is very much a real capability and the proficiency of the crew and the aircraft and the systems overall. Uh, it was pretty wild to see this stuff work and work like clockwork. Uh, so, again, significant effort by the Air Force here. Two B-2s in trail in flight. Uh, one T-38 and KC-135. A lot of – and we had cameras and almost everything except the second B-2. So a lot of coordination went into getting these shots. Uh, control the throttles. Center, depth 2 one request. Depth 2 one go ahead. Depth 2 one looking to uh, extend past the uh, Pioneer 082041. Uh, so there, basically, what you're seeing is the aircraft all are treated the same, whether it's military, civilian, if it's a stealth bomber, or if it's just someone's little Cessna out there, it gets treated the same. And 30s. So same level of responsibility in regards to your age. All right, we're in uh, pre-contact. So Bandit's just doing his pre-contact checklist. We're going to be able to see the tanker uh, pretty soon. So they should be taking off right about now. So we got about uh, 20, a little less than 20 minutes till uh, air fueling. The tanker was slightly delayed. Ah, oh, what a beautiful shot! Watching these jets, it's just such a wild looking aircraft. Every literally, every angle that you look at it, it looks like a totally different aircraft. Um, Can you explain why tanking is so important for the B two? Most of our targets are tanked. We've got to be able to make sure we can get all the way to the target with the. So I'll just to summarize this, because this is really important. The reason that Whiteman Air Force Base was chosen as the sole like air uh, uh, field and to, to host the B-2 is because it's central in the United States. It's equidistant to either coast. Uh, it also makes it really hard to attack, you know, dead center in the middle of America. So there's actually a strategic reason for this to happen. It's important. Important to note that whenever the B-2 takes off, it's going to return at Whiteman. Very rarely do they go and stop somewhere else. That's just because home porting it makes it much easier for them to protect the aircraft. And it's all about protecting that asset. So Whiteman is a hugely important thing. Let me just skip ahead here. All right, here we are. This is from a, a 135. If you can't tank in this aircraft, this is the actual tank crew. Pilot. Ghost is talking about here how important tank is. So you can see other B-2. This is us. This is from the 135. Now, unlike other aircraft, the thing about the B-2 that's really pretty cool is that the every piece of the B-2 tanking receptacle is so far come out. together perfectly. Okay. Everyone is at the top of their game. Now, if you look right back there, we got a little bit of the back engine nacelle, like exhaust ports. Those are actually the same material used from the shuttle for the heat. Pretty wild. One of the most sensitive places that we could not show was they actually let us go up on a catwalk, look down at the aircraft, and it was really wild to see the top of it where the engine exhaust come out. Pretty cool stuff. I imagine they don't want to show that because obviously it's classified, probably a similar setup to the B-21, but really wild stuff to see. So here they are. Here's the uh, tanker. Uh, the boom operator, important also to note that the reason we wanted a 135 and not a KC-46 
Well, comment below if you know right now, if you know why. I'm going to give you guys a quick second to respond. Why we want to film at a 135, not the 46. You ready? It's an easy one. Filming from the uh, 46 is actually remote control video screen boom. So we can't film any of that that video output. So actually having a boom in a 135, boom operator in a 135, we can actually film the aircraft tanking. So whenever we fly, we always request 135s for that specific reason. So it gives you an idea of how challenging it is to coordinate all this stuff and get all this stuff in the air. This isn't just like a, you know, a Sunday ride. A lot of months of planning went into to getting these, these exact moments. The jobs are demanding and daily training keeps them at peak performance. The pilots. That's us tanking. But everyone's a hero. We're going to disconnect it. Sure one, we'll go. Honestly, I've refueled pretty much every type of receiver there is out there. B2 is completely different than pretty much all of them. The receptacle is very far towards the aft part of the aircraft. Yep. They can move like a fighter jet, but they're the same size as one of the bigger aircrafts, honestly. The B2, it never you ceased to amaze me how big it is. It doesn't, it, it's hard to get a sense of its scale just looking at this. You are super smooth, man. I appreciate it. Ninety-seven. I think so. Obviously, this guy. I don't know if it came through. In the through, beginning, it was just a design. But it was an he idea. was the was first concept. pilot to fly a B two in combat operations. Until the same. Yep. Two one request uh, vectors two initial runway one nine. So here we are coming to land. Flight was very smooth. Good. Do an heavy flight two six zero vector four nine. For any critical phases of flight, you're on oxygen. Dead two one heavy request field and sight when able. Come on. How cool is that? She's never even I though I've seen this a million times. Watching this thing, I mean, just like that is just such a wild, wild looking aircraft. Like butter. Alright, nice, you have fun? Dude. I don't even, I, I can't even form the words. <laughs> that was amazing. It really was. Probably one of the most amazing experiences I've ever had. Here we come in. You park the jet. We get out. And you know what happens next? Those motors aren't stopping. There's a whole new crew. We got to grab the cameras, grab the crew. So many things go into making this fly. And they're going to go back out and fly. Like, it takes two people to fly at the thousands of people behind the scenes to make it there it is. All right, let's uh so let's talk a little bit about some of the other things that you may not have seen. So definitely a lot that was cut out. Some of the people are at some folks want to know what was cut out. And um, you know, a lot of it was angles. Uh there are a few clips that um I will keep for myself. They were cleared by security and we have them. Um let's just put it this way. If someone were to ask me, did I actually get to fly a B2? I can neither confirm nor deny. So pretty wild stuff, pretty wild experience. Uh, yeah, it's it's uh, it's it's really cool stuff. But I wanted to give you all an impression just of how much work goes into getting these things. I'm not a vlogger. I'm not a I'm not a you know a social media influencer, um, journalist. So we have to follow a lot of protocols, and as a result, we really get access that you're not going to find anywhere else. So we really appreciate, of course, watching, try to do some more behind the scenes stuff, some little Q and a of things that you may not, um, you might be wanting to know and that we can try to answer and, you know, um, just stay tuned, keep watching the episodes, a lot more stuff coming down the pipe and, uh, you know, thank you for, for watching. So with that, I'll let you get back, let you unbuckle and, uh, wander about the cabin. Peace out.